The uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act significantly changed the rules for corporate taxes, making most of them permanent while others are set to uh, expire next year. Let's find out what could be next for tax policy under a future Biden or Trump administration. Joining us now, Rohit Kumar, pr principal and co-leader of PwC's Washington National Tax Services Practice. He's also a former deputy chief of staff uh, to Republic, uh, Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell. Uh, and Kimberly Clossing, economist and professor at the UCLA uh, School of Law. She served in the Biden administration as Deputy Assistant Secretary uh, for Tax Analysis uh, at the uh, Treasury uh, Department. Kimberly, let me just start with you. Is, is there a, a current thinking on um, globally what's the most advantageous uh, tax rate for the United States at this point to make us uh, as competitive as possible? Uh, around the world, and I know that we, you know, sometimes we talk about real tax rates versus stated tax rates. What, what do you think tax rates should be uh, for corporations in, in the U.S.? Yeah, if you look at the United States relative to our peer nations, one thing that's immediately obvious is that we raise much less revenue from the corporate tax than almost any peer nation. The OECD recently did a study of about 115 countries, and we were in the bottom 10 percent in terms of corporate revenue relative to GDP. And this is despite the fact that our corporate sector is one of the most successful corporate sectors in the world. So given U.S. revenue needs, I think the U.S. corporate rate needs to be higher. And I think there are ways that one can do that that would both encourage investment at the same time, but also build a, a fairer and more efficient tax system. Is, is that the way we want to do it, though, Kimberly? That, that's what I'm trying to, to figure out. What, what's the total uh, amount of the of what we raise, total revenues that come from the corporate sector. We can't solve all our problems uh, with corporations. And, and there's a way of having it, you know, be paid through shareholders or customers or, uh, sure. you know, consumers, however you want to do it. There are, there are other ways to do it. And we, we all want our corporations to be able to, to, to redeploy assets for innovation and raises and hiring or for whatever reason, profits. For shareholders, we, we'd like to, to, to find that sweet spot. Absolutely. And a, and a good tax system raises revenue from many sources. We happen to be not reliant on the corporate tax at present, and we've reduced corporate tax revenues by about 40 percent due to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And one thing we saw in the wake of that legislation was that most of the benefits went to those at the top of the distribution. About 80 percent of the benefits from those corporate tax cuts accrued to those in the top 10 percent of the income distribution. So it's more a matter of balance. It's not like it all has to come from the corporate sector, but there's room to raise more money uh, in the corporate sector to address some of our fiscal needs. And I've written elsewhere about a lot of other taxes that we could rely on as well. Um, but I think the corporate tax has to be part of the picture. Uh, Rohit, it, it looks, it, if, depending on the outcome of the election, the corporate rates could go up. Is that the right move, or, or did, was, that a, was that a positive when we cut corporate taxes in 2017? Look, I mean, I think it was a positive. And, and what, what, what's not being said here is, if you look at the seven or eight years before the 2017 Act, revenues as a percent of GDP, corporate revenues, were about 1.5 percent. And if you look at the seven years after, it's about 1.4 percent. If you take the COVID year out, it stays at 1.5 percent. And this year, we're actually going to hit 2 percent, and it's going to be the highest amount of corporate tax revenue ever collected. So, look, what's not stated is a lot of that corporate rate reduction was paid for by broadening the corporate tax base and taxing more income. Now, we do collect less from corporations relative to our peer countries, but that's not because our rates are so low. They're not. They're actually middle of the pack. It's because more than half of business income in the United States doesn't show up on a C corporation return and isn't subject to the corporate income tax. It's in pass through form. It's partnerships. It's S corps. It shows up on individual returns. So, look, if we want to be, let's be honest, if you want to raise the amount of business taxes collected in this country, you have to go after a whole bunch of small and medium sized businesses to get there if you want to sort of equal uh, what our European counterparts do. So, you know, that's, an, that's a political question, but um, I suspect that nobody is going to be running around saying, let's raise taxes on small and medium-sized businesses to pay for whatever it is you want to pay for.